Um, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Richards. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. <clears throat> here. Thank you. And Commissioner Jones is not here as of yet. Uh, Commissioner Jones is, is here now. So you can. Oh, Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Just calling the roll, Jeff. Good evening. <clears throat> here. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. So um, I'm going to ask first, I see we have a number of folks here. So we're going to open up first to tenant comment, followed by staff comment, and then public comment. And I'll ask Jack if you're there, if you don't mind uh, facilitating this. Absolutely. So just a reminder, we're going to ask you to share um, where you're calling I think from, I have which I have property, it. and then also uh, the I'm muting those that are talking that should not be. So the the first um, group I'm going to call on, uh, Mr. Edwards, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, just make sure everyone says their full name for me, please. Hello, I'm David Edwards from the Salvo House. I'm here with... Um, I am the vice president of the LTO at the Savo House. I'm here with Al Shagman, president of the LTO, and some residents from the Savo House. In our newly formed LTO, what we're trying to concentrate on is working with the North Hampton Housing Authority on issues of safety, health, and um, quality of life for our residents. And um, we've already took some initiative and securing the building, doing daily walks to the staircases, and trying to keep the building safe. But we need help from the North Hampton Housing Authority, uh, keeping the building safe and having a quality of life for residents, for a lot of which this is going to be their last stop. So I'm looking forward to working with you, and I brought some of the residents here today to share their concerns on the situations going on here at the sidewalks. Thank you, Mr. Hello, my name is Roy C. Martin, 81 Town Street, apartment 529. Now, uh, there's been several people have approached me and asked me about when is our laundry room going to open up. Uh, it's, it's really something when Brayman, when Brayman turns around, and they get to go in the apartments, come out of the apartments without wearing no protective gear or anything. All the bed bug apartments, I've seen them. And I saw them in, in Fred's apartment. And they went in, they come out, they sit in the hallways, walk up and down the hallways. And they have no protection whatsoever. Now, right, we are down to one apartment, right, which happens to be up on the seventh floor. Now. I am saying that we it's time for us to open up the laundry rooms because a lot of us have a lot of wash to do. And what what we got here now is that uh, uh, you're not working with us. Kara is not working with us, right? You know, as far as the people in the housing here, right? We try and we try hard and we try to follow her rules. But her rules are getting a little bit ridiculous now. And what we need is we need you to work with us, Kara, and all of us can work together and get things done. We need the laundry rooms open. We need the community room open. When they can have all the facilities, I know, right? Uh, when, when we can have all, when you can have all the facilities you've got, when you can have all the facilities, you got everything going. All right. Okay, my time. Right, thank, thank you, Mr. Martin. Okay. Is there someone else, Roy? Is there someone else there? Yep, yep, yep. There is. There is. 
Well, first things first, happy holidays to all of you. Hello. Thank you. Some people got on their face. Mr. Pavia, let's say your full uh, name. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to do that. You guys have a Red bad connection. Seven ten seven. Is it Mr. Pavia and that's seven ten? Bad connection. That's all right. That we is correct. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll listen as hard as we can. First things first. I said, first of all, happy holidays to each and one of you. And I hope that we don't have any scrooges. I've lived here now almost three years in this building. I get tired of everybody complaining. And some of it, it's a good complaint. And let me tell you something. The number one complaint is for people that want to feel safe here. And I don't feel safe here as a 64-year-old male here. If I come in the building, I guarantee you people continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> sure, I'm glad I have a roof over my head. A lot of people have to be a target here in this building, especially the seniors, that's what I look out for. Actually, I look out for everybody's welfare too. So if I can play any role in this, you know, I've been here for quite some time. It, uh, see, the point is, is it's gotta stop. I have to work. Let, let me finish. I'm not going to have anybody rush me what I'm saying. I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and I'm going to be done. If people want to come in the building, I want to make sure that they feel safe like I want to feel safe. So the bottom line is, what kind of help are you giving us with the uh, laundry rooms? My laundry room, my my laundry in my apartment is so stacked, it's beginning to leave a bad odor in the hall when people tell me that live my life. That. Tells you something. So let's get together here. Let's work together. All right. So uh sorry about all the distractions in the background. So all I know is hey, I don't want to be rushed. It has to be done, and it has to be done as ASAP. Because that's a very bad situation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. I don't like being rushed. Mr. Edwards, can you try to keep the rest of the folks down while some, everyone is speaking? There's no rush. Hey, everyone, no one, no one needs to rush. Everyone has three minutes, so don't feel hurried. Oh, the nice. clock doesn't start until you're speaking. Hello, good evening. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll get right to I'll get right to the point. Everyone, everyone has spoken about the laundry rooms being closed. Now I can understand taking precautions about that spread, spreading the bed bugs. Just, At the just same time, name. I have been I beg your pardon. You just need your Sam, name. You're a Torrance, apartment 112. Thank you. I gave you my whole name. Okay. So I'll get I'll 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 just cut to the chase. I cannot afford to do laundry in the laundromat this has been going on for two months it cost me approximately 40 to 60 dollars a month to do laundry i can't afford it i'm living on social security very small amount of social security and if you can't make the laundry room available to people then i think that tenants should be compensated a certain amount off their rent so they can afford to do laundry at the laundry room in, in, in the laundromat and if uh, if this continues, I'm going to have to withhold money from my rent to do my, my laundry. That's what I intend to do because I can't both pay my rent and do laundry at the laundromat. So you have my notice that, you know, very soon I'm going to possibly next month if the laundry room is not open, I'm going to have to start withholding the charges to go to the laundromat. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. I am Mrs. Sergeant Walter Savo, apartment 627. I, um, I also um, am speaking on behalf of the laundry that um, being closed um, because um, 
because of the laundry rooms being closed and um, not having access to the laundry rooms um, and me not being able to do my laundry, I can't have my laundry people come in to the building right now. And so I have to do my laundry on my own. And I have to spend $11 or so a week. And um, like Sandra and the rest of us, we just can't afford it. And I have a bunch of laundry, like a bunch of other people say, in their, in their apartments. And I'm overloaded on laundry. And um, I just can't take it. We've got to have access to the laundry rooms. I brought this up last month or the month before. Either something be done or like Sandra, I will have to knock it off my rent. And I really don't want to do that. Because I don't want you guys to tell me, well, we will start eviction. And I really don't want that. So if you guys don't want to adhere to eviction notice, then please do something. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Ricky Peterson. I live in Salvo House 518. And I just uh, want to say that uh, I wish that the uh, uh, laundry rooms could be opened. This is a hardship for a lot of people here. And, uh, and it's just almost unconscionable, you know, that we don't, we can't do a laundry. Um, and uh, and I felt that the uh, the the bed bug uh, situation um, got out of hand because of uh, management. When I moved here two years ago, there was a couple of apartments that had bed bugs, and, and they were taken care of. But nobody ever inspected to see if there was more bed bugs in the others um, in the other apartments. And yeah. so uh, eventually, this. This is what we. Uh, um, this is what happened uh, a couple of months ago when we had this big outbreak, and um, and so that you know the the uh, the responsibility of management to to control these things to inspect them once a year is necessary, and uh, and it wasn't done until we had a crisis, and uh, and so it just shows a little. Respect for the residents live here, uh, and so uh, that's my complaint. And uh, uh, Merry Christmas! Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Happy Hanukkah! Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Al Shagden. I'm the president of the LTO. I'm one that gets a lot of uh, complaints from residents. Uh, the bed bug situation. This bed bug situation has been dragged on for so long. You can't do something one week and wait two weeks to do something else. The spread of the bed bugs is never going to end here if you're not on top of it right away. And the way it's been dragging on, I don't see how the bed bugs are going to be gone. Um, it's something that needs to be more taken care of more quickly, more sooner than the way it's been dragging on. Uh, otherwise, we're never gonna get rid of these bed bugs and we need to get these laundry rooms open. People are complaining, people are having a hard time. The holidays are here, people are stressed. And please, we need some help. We need to get things going and moving. Uh, it's been dragging on too long. We got the community room open for special events, but not open for the residents, only for special events. Why is that? We got to move on. We got to get things open. And please, your help is very much appreciated. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chagnon. Anybody else? I think that's it. Right. Can we have a? Uh, can I finish my three minutes? Can I finish my three minutes? You know, the only thing I can think of is we have to have class action suit against Northampton Housing Authority, and by class action, I mean everybody in the house signs on to it, and then they get a piece of the money that they should get. So with that, I'll let you go. I'm not a lawyer, but I know lawyers. I think so. Thank you again, Mr. Martin. Mr. Edwards, is that everyone? Yes, that's everyone that is here. Thank okay. you Thank you very you. much for taking the time to listen to us. Thanks for coming. Uh, Joelle, are you looking to go next? If there are no re more residents to speak, I would like to go after they do because they probably say what I want to say. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through a few more. Then I just saw your hand raised. Uh, the The next person is Angela Santanello. Hello, this is Angela Salvo four twenty five, and the complaints that I've received have been similar to the ones that you just heard previously. So I really don't have much more to say other than we do have an individual on the second floor that we're having trouble with. And um, I'll be forwarding a lot of documentation to management about that situation. Other than that, um, hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Ms. Santanello. Um, the next person on my screen is Mr. Kierdoff. Would you like to make a comment this evening? Hello. Yes, thank you. Um, I am uh, the uh, vice president of the Four Sander Tenants Association, and we have several times, multiple times, requested a certain piece of information, which is, what percentage of the tenants at Four Sander are elderly and what percentage are handicapped? And the board has consistently refused to give us this information. We're entitled to it legally. And if we have to, we can get a, a freedom of information request for it. But it would be better if the board just told us. And the reason for this, as you probably can guess, is that the number of tenants at Four Sander, uh, uh, there's only supposed to be 13% handicapped in an elderly, in an elderly uh, uh, senior housing project. And there are far more far more handicapped here than that. And I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas too. Thank you, Thank Mr. Mr. Kierdorf. The next person on my screen is identified as Kara Paul Paz. Are you a resident? Um, yes, hello, my name is Gwen and I live at Hampshire Heights in Northampton. And um, I am here tonight to um, mention that the annual budget and the annual plan hopefully will be out in January so that there's enough time before April for residents and LTOs to review them. Um, and then um, the other thing is the water problems in front of my unit and inside my unit. Um, apparently there was never a sump pump put in to the new uh, job that was done. So I don't know if that was just an oversight, but um, there's mud washing up into my basement. And um, so um, I don't think that's very good, but thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bod. Thank you. The next person on my screen uh, is labeled as um, laptop. Are you a resident, employee, or a member of the public? Okay, I will go on to the next person, which is Pamela Goodwin. Are you a resident or a member of the public? 
Good evening. I'm a res. Um, I'm a. I'm not a resident. I have experience in the buildings down there, and um, okay. I would like to make a public comment when it's time okay. for that. Perfect. I will um come back to you when that time is right. Um, the next person on my screen, I just want to confirm, Judy Roncalli, you are a member of the public, not a resident of the Housing Authority. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, perfect. I will swing back around. Um, the next individual uh, is Luke Rotello. Are you a member of the public or a resident? I am a member of the public. Okay, I will get back to you. Um, Councilperson Perry, I will get back to you as well. Um, Joella, you're next on my, oh, I'm sorry, there's one other person. Um, KC, I believe you are a resident. Um, yes, Mary Chapman at McDonald. Again, this is uh, difficult to actually signed in in the naive hope that something would have happened to help resolve this issue. And it appears nothing, but maybe it's coming later. Um, at this point, say there's nothing. I'm curious to know, do you have any kind of a, uh, I know you don't have a plan in case of something like this happening. Have you scheduled anything to figure out what to do? Do you have consultants? Do you have listening sessions? Have you even thought about how you're going to deal with it? Because it's these people, I mean, these people are, you know, this is painful for them and it's painful for people watching. And I don't, you know, I don't like to see people. Hurt. Someone asked me, why did I care? I care about people, all of them. And I mean, I've got laundry, but it still affects me because we're in the same housing authority. It's just, anyway, you're always talking about health and safety. That's not safe. And it's certainly not healthy. I just, uh, I, I just want to say, I hope you can get it together. It's not a competition, y'all. It is not a competition. We work together. We could get so much more done. And I'm interested to hear some more about helping us attend the union trainings. I had I had extensive training in that. And I would love to go on a road trip and, and meet the people and, and hobnob and enjoy it. Um, it's been a hard few years here. And, um, and I'm actually still planning for catastrophe because once one happens, the rest seem to tumble into place. So I suggest y'all think about a plan C because you miss the ball on B, I'm afraid. But I'll help you however I can, and I'm sure others will. People have ideas. I'd, I don't know how to fix it, but I do know people are really concerned at this point. And, uh, and I wish you the best of luck and let us know how we can help because people want to help. When my house burned down, I was like, my God, why are these people helping me this way? They wanted to help me. We want to help y'all. It'll help us, okay? It's not a competition. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Chapman. Uh, the next person on my screen, I just want to verify, is a member of the public. Jerry Allsbad, I believe, is the last name. Um, can you just confirm you're a member of the public? Yes. Okay, perfect. I will come back to you. And then there's one other person. Um, it's anonymous which I believe when your camera was on, you are a Salvo resident. Would you like to make a comment? Okay, we are going to go Jack, ahead. Jack, did you see the name Holly? I, I saw one box named Holly. I don't know if they're still here and I don't know if they're a resident they're, or not. They're here. I missed them. Holly, are you a member of the public or resident looking to speak? Okay, and now we will go on to Joella. Again, greetings from Texas. And um, I've been here for a while and it's nice to sleep throughout the night without having to wake every 15 to 30 minutes for bed bugs to capture and get them off my person and bed. I typed up something, so um, um, it's emotional. I, I, I hope, me being away, um, that the six-week chemical treatment series is effective and finger crossed, praying that the building is completely bug-free. The financial and emotional toll on residents, their families and helpers and friends is immeasurable. I hope NHA and residents are a lot smarter and more proactive because the reactive after detection response is, in my opinion, inhumane. Bed bugs have been around for some time. 
before this administration and may return unless effective measures are in place. There needs to be a fund for transportation to, um, and for offsite laundry. There needs to be an emergency temporary shelter so residents can leave, so the professionals can successfully eradicate bed bugs in apartments. Also, and I have experienced this personally, blaming tenants for the bed bug situation absolutely has to stop. If, for example, there is a detection of bed bugs in apartments when there is cluttering and or hoarding, NHA, which includes myself because I'm part of this, needs to do a better job, better thorough job doing inspections and to detect residents who may need help with a problem involving cluttering and or hoarding. Actually, I think it was eight years ago, I emailed NHA about having a 12-step group when I was getting my addiction certifications. Um, and I just want to say, you know, residents, tenants, citizens, Northampton deserves better. Also, I'd like to say, that the um, NHA in, uh, board elections are uh, uh, upcoming. I don't know if it's next month or the following month. And it's one who's been really participating in a lot of elections from the LTO elections, from city council, even mayor and other positions. I think we need to really get to have a, I'm hoping for a fair, non-interference voting process. It's important. And then lastly, I would just like to say, someone else mentioned this, I do remember that uh, housing did, uh, I knew some residents a week before the mass union of public housing tenants convention was being held. This time they got funding and transportation to attend the meeting. I attended one in May and an hour convention some years ago. And I was told I didn't put it in in time, which was not true. I know it's at least three months and you can ask the uh, facilitator, Jeffrey Disc Disc Driscoll. And I never got um, reimbursed, never paid for it. So I'm just wondering what's the difference. Um, and then lastly, I think when we have an emergency like we have now, and people have said emergency, you hear, I know, I know people hear and feel for the people who are talking. I read an article from someone in the paper. He said, the psychological damage of these bed books having to go around in dirty clothes, sleep in soil sheets, it's affecting him. It's affecting people. And I know people know that. So my question is, when you have an emergency like this, and they may happen, why aren't we using all those beautiful new trucks and NHA vehicles to trans people, transport people to the, the laundromat? Why don't we have a fund for that? Don't be saying, well, you can go over there. And if anybody thinks you can go into a washing machine, wash a laundromat and just go to the dryer for free, you don't have a pulse of what poor people and tenants are going through. No such thing exists. You have to do the, laund uh, you have to do the washing. You just can't go to the laundry. And if the most effective, all the research I've done, most effective thing is the bed bugs, is the laundry, is the heat. And then that's cut off from people and then point it. Well, it's because of those tenants who haven't complied. Mm. That's inhumane. And that is what people are saying on their own because I'm not there. Grounds for a lawsuit. You're getting this done. Let's stop this. Whatever the reasons may be and say, we need to do better. We'll try to be better. And we're going to listen because I'm part of administration too, of the board basically, and we need to listen. We hear people and we want to make their lives better. We want to have compassion. All this stuff is in our bylaws. We need to have compassion because it's hurting me hearing people and it's hurting me experiencing this. We shouldn't have to do this. So it's going to be a bad mark that stays with us. So I'm hoping, and I'm saying this, I'm looking right at you, Chair. I'm hoping we can do better. And I'm looking at all board members. I'm hoping I can't find you all. I'm hoping you please from my heart, because I ain't too proud to beg. I'm begging you to do something about this. And I'm begging you to stop the blaming. I'm begging you, begging. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tarbutton. <clears throat> Back Chair, to you. I don't see any other residents for a comment. Um, we can go on to the next. You want to do staff and then public? Sure, so staff has the ability to unmute themselves if they'd like to make a comment. We'll give you a few seconds. Not seeing any, Chair, can I move on to public? Please, oh, please do, yeah. Okay, so the first person on my list is Pamela Goodwin. Hi, um, 
I, on three different occasions, came down uh, to Con Street. I was um, accompanying Margarita Morales when she was a, a union organizer for Mass Union Public Housing. I also was on um, almost three years, served on the state board, running around the state, setting up tenant unions. My experience there, and I'm so pleased to hear that you do have some tenant unions now, but as far as having rights and working alongside of management, I have heard that that's not happening all that well. I can tell just by tonight. A long time ago, only one resident was able to get the key out of management, open up that big room down there so we could even have meetings there. One person was allowed with a whole lot of begging, apparently, or a different kind of relationship than anybody else. The fact that they're in that big room to be able to attend this meeting is a real plus. But I just heard them say they're not allowed in there for any other thing unless, you know, somebody gave them a key. So now they're there. So now they're making their their uh, tenant comment at this uh, meeting, which is very important. There's a lot of other people who I know are unable to attend or scared to attend because I'm a consultant with the Stop Bullying Organization. It's a coalition. You'll hear from Mr. Halberstadt in a minute. And I also know in where I currently live, you know, there can be a bed bug situation, but as they have already said, it has to be nipped in the bud very quickly. And if it's not, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what the answer is, but I think when people get to the point of this exasperation, I hope that people know that if you're gonna withhold your rent for just cause, you put it in escrow so that you are not evicted. You can mm -hmm. consult a lawyer who will explain that to you. You don't just not pay the rent because the first thing people will do is give you an N2 Q, a notice to quit. You're breaking your lease if you do not pay the required amount of monthly rent. There's a proper way to do it. Consult it so somebody who knows how to do it or you are definitely going to be getting um, a, an NTQ with a notice to quit, and then you'll be evicted. You'll be thrown out on your on the streets in the middle of winter because I see it all the time in housing courts and other places. I don't know who's keeping time. I just know that across the state, there is a ton of issues with residents not having a, a say in the annual plan, not working in collusion and and to the success of the tenants. You know, management doesn't have a job except that you're to take care of the elderly and the disabled. And we say that in my building all the time. I'm in a HUD funded building and we get pushed around and there's a lot of controlling going on, but we do stand firm on a lot of things and we're making some headway. It is an uphill battle to be able to have good board of directors and good landlords or managers and an RSC, I see a resident service coordinator, she should be working very closely on behalf of those residents. She has a part of a management hat on, but for the most part, she is to help residents with these major problems. So I thank you for your time. I also wish you happy holidays. I'm looking forward to Joella coming back up from Texas and having it resolved. And I know what it's like to go to a laundromat and not be able to afford it because I was forced into doing that from a housing judge when a lot of perjury was committed. So if they can't afford it, you're asking for all kinds of other problems, including someone mentioned a class action suit, which we certainly hope that it doesn't come to that. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming, Ms. Goodwin. We appreciate it. The next sure. person on my list is Eric Perry. I'm just here to observe. Thank you for the opportunity, though. Thanks. Thank you. The next person is Jerry Halsbad. Yeah, it's Halberstadt. And um, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. Usually going to a new place, I like to just sit and listen. Um, and not jump in and, and, and make a fool of myself. So I, at, at the risk of of looking foolish. Um, 
uh, first of all, I thank you for your courtesy in allowing me to speak. And um, I should introduce myself. I, I live north of Boston in Peabody in subsidized housing. Um, I'm elderly. Uh, I, uh, I'm the coordinator of the Stop Bullying Coalition and I've uh, helped to run our, our uh, pennant organization here until it became too difficult because of the, of the bullying. Uh, we set out as an organization to try to protect people from bullying. And what we learned in the Commission on Bullying back in, 19, in 2017 um, was that the real problem is mobbing and hostile environment harassment, which is right. a fancy word for, for mobbing. And that basically puts people in a situation where they're not safe uh, where they live, where they're not comfortable. Um, we're now working on legislation um, on Beacon Hill to create a way for tenants to have protection for their rights. Um, and it would be the, the tenant advocate, it would be within the office of the attorney general. And that, that office would be able to step in and help resolve situations and if necessary, holds landlords accountable. Uh, this is awkward because I'm a guest and a first time guest, but these problems that I'm hearing about, they're on the board, you're the landlord. And uh, it would be presumptuous for me to tell you how to solve it, so I won't. Uh, but it's up to you to find a way. You're in charge. You're responsible. Put your heads together. If you need to find a consultant, I have a friend who, who's a retired consultant on on um, pests, bed bugs, um, dock roaches. Um, I have them both in my apartment. I I, I know what people are going through. And um, it, I I have problems. I can't just use a laundromat or even the the services in the building because I'm sensitive to chemicals that are in in you know everybody else's laundry. So I have I have to go to a relative's mm -hmm. home to be able to do my laundry. Um, so that that I can't imagine the difficulties that people are going through. And I know if you're serving on this board, you're doing it out of concern, out of empathy, out of decency. You want to serve your community and you've earned that. So how you do it, I have, I have hope and confidence that if you work together with the tenants, you will find a solution. And, um, and, as an advertisement, I'll put, people can look at stopbullyingcoalition.org and find out about the legislation. And it'd be great if you wrote to the committee or to your uh, state senator representative, um, because it, 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 we're trying to find a way to protect the basic rights of tenants so they could be safe and have peaceful enjoyment at home. and. That's really what I wanted to to speak to, and and if I spoke inappropriately, please forgive me. I'm just trying to be helpful, and um, I wish you every success uh, in in your responsibilities. Uh, with and and I say this also to the tenants: step up and work together. Thank you. For, thank thank you. you very much for your courtesy. Thank you, Mr. Halberstadt. Thank you. The next person on my screen is Judy Roncalli. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> nice to see you on screen, Jerry. I've spoken to you on email many times. Um, 
I am, I am shocked at the similarity in public housing managers. I live in public housing in Hadley. And boy, this is all too familiar to me. And I just can't believe that people can't do their laundry, that they can't use their community room. Um, and the similarity in management is scary. It is, it is really profound. I'm shocked, but not surprised. Um, we have many similar issues here. Not bed bugs because this is not a dupe, not a um, a building that's all close together. We're spread out, so if one person had bed bugs, another would not get them. Maybe in the same next door, but not that we're not that close. But um, the the lack of respect to tenants, which is exactly what I am hearing that you can't go to the laundry room and do your laundry. That is a blatant lack of respect for tenants. And that's where the similarity comes in from management in the area here. Um, I don't know what the answer is. A class action lawsuit sounds, sounds good to me. And I hope the tenants don't wait to do something like that because management is not doing their job. Thank you for the time. And thanks for coming in tonight. Um, so Chairperson Carney, it looks like that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Luke Rotello. Uh, I'm just here to hear concerns of residents. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and that is everyone on my screen. Okay, thanks so much, Jack. And thanks everybody for coming out. I know some of you uh, came from a distance, at least, well, geographically, not, I mean, not geographically, but we, we welcome your coming and we appreciate all your comments. Mm -hmm. So the next item on the agenda is the executive director report. I'm going to hand it over to Director Leeper, please. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Yes, this is our um, monthly summary for December 2023. Uh, the GPR was $228,166, of which collected was one ninety eight three twelve thirty eighty seven percent The delinquency is uh, down by $5,148.94 from last meeting. Uh, our number of annual recertifications for the current month in public housing were zero, section eight were 70. Um, of the 70 recertify, uh, due, 69 were recertified and one is outstanding due to paperwork. Um, uh, our wait list, our one bedroom wait list, uh, federal applicants has 96, um, two bedroom has 34, three bedrooms have 23, four bedrooms have two, and section eight has 58. Our state applications, we have 19,000. 381 applicants on our family wait list and 4,923 on our elderly disabled list. We had two move outs in public housing, three in section eight. Uh, we had 11 move ins in public housing and five in section eight. And we have two people on notice in the public housing. Um, end of month vacant ready are two, vacant unready are six with a total of eight, all of which are pre-leased. We completed, um, eight make readies, um, all eight of them were complete rehabs. Uh, we took in 166 new work orders starting the month with 71. Um, we completed 176 work orders and we have 31 remaining incomplete. For my follow-up from our last meeting, there was a concern um, with Salvo, uh, several Salvo residents who had concerns about bed bugs and laundry rooms being closed. Um, We've been very, very busy uh, addressing the situation. Um, uh, I'd like the board to know that um, in some instances, we had to obtain court injunctions so that we could gain access uh, to uh, treat or prepare for treatment. Uh, we're down to one unit um, based upon the recommendation from the extermination company um, and discussions with the health department. We closed down the common area community room and laundry rooms um, until the final unit is treated. 
Um, like I said, we're down to one unit and that was scheduled to be treated today. Um, however, when we arrived to do the treatment, the unit was not prepared. So um, we do have a court order on that. We will be filing another injunction. The plan is, is that um, once this final unit is treated, um, we will we will do a, another full building inspection. And as soon as it's safe to do so, we will be opening the community rooms and laundry rooms. Um, last week, although I was on vacation, I met with the executive team and we met and decided that once the laundry rooms are finally opened, for the inconvenience, residents will have free laundry for two months. So you will not need quarters to operate the machines. We feel that this is a good compromise for residents and seeing their needs and the costs associated with the, um, uh, you know, with the, you know, the, the uh, put, you know, being put out and having to go to laundry rooms. Um, you know, we had our first treatment um, within days of finding the first unit. Um, the staff has worked incredibly hard in addition to the contractors we brought in. Um, to get this under control. Uh, for updates and events, we hosted holiday concerts at all five elderly disabled sites. The Heart of the Valley Chorus, which is a woman's acapella choir, received a grant from the Mass Cultural Council that allowed them to bring their holiday spirit to our residents at no cost. We provided holiday cookies and hot chocolate and fun was had by all who attended. Special thanks to the Heart of the Valley for spreading their joy to our residents this holiday season. Coordinators from Parent Child Plus visited Florence Heights and they donated winter coats, diapers, formulas, hats, and books. During their visit, four families signed up for their program, which supports families with children ages 16 months to four years through intensive and consistent home visits, which will prepare for academic success and strengthen families. We also coordinated with the Toys for Tots this year and have received 95 new toys to give to families at both Hampshire Heights and Florence Heights. The toys are being sorted and our staff will be dropping them off at each household before the end of the week. Families will be notified beforehand of the drop-off date and time. We are also excited to share that we received a generous donation of four bicycles, including helmets and bike locks. The recipients of the bikes will be picked via raffle and the winners will be notified before the 23rd of December. There is still time to sign up for home delivered meal from MANA for the holidays. The deadline for sign up is Friday, December 22nd at 11 p.m. To place an order, call or text 413-570-0787 or go online to mananorthampton.org. On behalf of the Northampton Housing Authority, we wish you all a safe and happy holiday season. So Thank ends the executive director report. Thank you, Director Leeper. Fantastic. Um, I just want to reiterate the uh, um, holiday meal on December 25th at the Mana Soup Kitchen. Um, and also, if anyone can't get there, they have meal delivery, as the director pointed out as well. And I'll be serving up meals on December 25th. So if anybody else is looking for something to do, come on down and have a meal. And um or deliver. Or deliver. Or have one and have one delivered, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, so I i I now want to turn it over to any of the board members who have some questions for the director on the director's report. And I see Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield, please. Uh, Ian, I want to apologize for background noise. Um, I thank you for the report. Uh, it was helpful. Uh, I do have to say that some things concern me greatly. I don't think a month or two of laundry will suffice. It's about less, let's see, a month I go $10 maybe, but you hear people saying they've spent 60 to 80 bucks. How does that reconcile? And why is there a middle ground? What the tenants do besides keep the bed butts, try to keep the bed butts at bay and to be clean. And one way of really trying to rid themselves of bed butts by trying to do laundry. And I think what that needs to be reinvested, re, needs to be re uh, looked at to reevaluated because I don't think that that's fair to them. And I have to tell you, and I can't help but to think this, I just, I see our rent pays for, you know, administration to have cars, pays for their gas. Our tenants, our rent pays for that. 
and we can't even give them that's pennies and it just makes me wonder are people is administration or NHA getting some kind of incentive to keep expenses down? Because if that's the case, then that was probably the cause of what we have right here. And I think that that's, that's not good, guys. That's not good. Board, come on. It's our responsibility, too. They need more than that. I think we should reimburse them. They should bring you their receipts of what they've paid. I've submitted receipts in, and I never paid. And I think that I just also want to say, also, I think we really need to watch who this exterminator, this vending company is. I know that my neighbor across the hall, she cried for a weekend from him yelling in her face, getting in her face. He did the same thing to me, and I had to ponder whether or not I was going to file a police report. But I don't want to get more people in trouble with this. It's stressful. Everybody's stressful. I do that and that because on some levels, people have reported him to be very considerate. But he also got into a, almost got into a fisticuff with another male resident. So hi, sweetheart. So I think that we need to. I think that we need to really reevaluate who we come be, come and do our work because, again, as I've said, two years this guy was here, at least once a month, this company. And not one person even knew what a bed bug was. And some people probably could have prevented it because they thought it was fleas from their furry animals. So who is, what is the job? They came in my place for a heat treatment. I do now know it's because I'm next to, uh, uh, underneath the person who probably has a whole lot more because the people across from me, they had one treatment and nothing. So I think it depends on where they are. And I really think that we need more. And I was very nervous as one resident said earlier and coming into my apartment with sneakers on, bed bugs can get in the crevice of your sneakers without proper appropriate clothing. So, because if this is our lowest bidder, sometimes you get what you pay for. And then um, I, I, I just, I just, guys, let's, let's do the, let's do more than the right thing. And I think it's good that some of these things are going on. I know I haven't been able to participate in things because I feared bed bugs. So I think we need to do more than just put a Band-Aid on a surgical wound. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Commissioner Richards, please. Yes, I just wanted to say, um, I too am concerned about the bed bugs and uh, the laundry situation. And I applaud the administration for offering some subsidies for laundry. And, you know, if there, I, I, what I understand is there are some people who haven't uh, been able to be uh, uh, prepared for heat treatment and that creates a problem, but, and, and uh, uh, everlasting extension of all those problems. But thank you to administration who is offering that up. And I, I think as a board member, I'm, you know, commit myself to the safety and the well-being of the residents. So thank you. And thank you, Kara. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Before I go back to Commissioner Tarbutton, um, uh, you have your hand raised again, right? Commissioner Tarbutton. Okay, so before I go back to Commissioner Tarbutton, uh, Commissioner, any any other commissioner have any question for or uh, regarding the director? Yeah, I think I think that we should evaluate each person who has uh, who lives at Salvo who has uh, been put through this you know, the last three months to uh, prepare whatever um, uh, money they spent um, or time they lost or whatever, inconvenience, um, and, and, and extend it to the director and the director should direct, should also um, alert the board of these, um, these payments. And I think we should pay them. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. I don't see Commissioner Jones or Commissioner Cancel. So yes, get uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Yeah, I, I do uh, want to just comment on something. I I hear what people are saying, and I don't want to give it to one person who's doing something or one person who's blaming on things. I, I don't think that that's very helpful. I think sometimes what we're saying is like, good, you're doing something. That kind of reminded me when people don't have stoves that are working, and I don't know if they do newly installed stoves, and some people are applauding that you have a hot plate. The two doesn't measure. People pay for a stove. People pay for a pest 
a free apartment to live in humane conditions. It's not the same. Something is better than nothing, but that's like giving somebody crumbs and, you know, what was that? Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake, giving them crumbs and say, we got to be bigger than this. We got to do better than this. And I tell you, one person once said, this makes us look bad, or they think I'm making them look bad. I come from a different perspective, a lived experience, mm -hmm. and I'm there. And I don't know, I wonder what you would do, each and every one of you, if you had to live with me. One resident they're saying, guys, there's a story behind it. I'm not saying nobody's at fault. You know, a person has stage four cancer, maybe live, may live an hour, a year or two. They may need some help. They may have needed some help a long time ago because they may have had an issue with clutter. Where were we then? How do you get a yearly inspection? How do you do certification? What are you looking for? I have seen on my floor, I've seen clutter. And I even said, let's get some groups here. Let's get some 12 step to try to help people. I don't like this blaming. Well, it's because of this person, this person. Yeah, some people have a lot of problems. I mean, in the tiny places that we live and I've had some accidents, one week not being able to get up is cluttered. I mean, let's think of something creative. See here, my mind thinks, why don't we try to work with some of the storage units to get discount for people who are in public housing? So I'm always thinking this because, and then let's educate people about what it is to hoard or how to do things. I mean, we can do that. We can be that. You can be that good here. So the town vision of treating people with dignity and respect is what housing does. So let's do that because the fact you can say, and you know what, let me just tell you something. And this may be another reason I hope people don't look bad because I think when the news coverage showed what was really going on, because I thought it was just four in that little corridor. When they came, that was the first time I ever saw what one looked like and how to do it and how it was about. So when they came to do it, no care what, how many degrees you got or how many degrees you don't have. And I apologize because at first I said, I thought it came from a certain people who were doing other things or club. And I realized it can happen to anyone and everyone. So I think that we really need to be above the phrase, like a turbulence on the airplane, go above that. So we can get to a, de a destination because all this negativity and all this stuff that's going on and hurt and blaming, it can really like turbulence, bring a, a plane down and crash and kill everyone. So I think we need to really look above ourselves. And I thank another commissioner who lives in uh, 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 in public housing to say, give them what they pay for. They're out of it. No fault of their own. And if it was their fault, do we give any help to help them, help themselves? And we can't be like, oh, good, you gave them that. Just like giving somebody a hot plate when their stove don't heat up. That's not comparable. Guys, we got to do better than this. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. And um, before I go back to uh, Commissioner Richards, is your hand raised or is it just still up? Oh, no, sorry. Okay, then I see uh, Commissioner Cancel, please. Uh, yeah, um, I am, um, I just want to say that I'm really. Uh, I'm really disturbed and um, really discouraged at the fact that we have closed down these laundry facilities uh, for our residents at Salvin. Um, that's probably one of the number one tools uh, to deal with eradicating bed bug issues. And the fact that we cut the access to those to our residents there is really mind-boggling to me. It is. I am very, very disappointed. Um, I call for these facilities to be reopened immediately. Immediately. Whoever suggested that this would be a good idea to eradicate the problem really needs to understand what it is like to go through this problem. To make residents go off-site to do laundry, residents that may have disabilities, residents that may have limitations, uh, whether it's physical or financial, um, it is really, uh, it, it's, it's just uh, unbelievably uh, not only disrespectful, uh, it is inconsiderate. It is extremely inconsiderate to cut access. I mean, cutting access to community rooms is one thing, and it's really, that's another thing that's concerning, especially during times like this. That's when you want 
want to open more access for residents to get together and figure out how to work things out together and with us. I am really, really disturbed at the fact that those laundry facilities have been closed for this long. Please open those up. It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense to have those things closed right now. That is what's going to help eradicate the problem. Heat will kill those bugs. Please open open those those laundry facilities up. There's just no there's I. I don't understand why anybody would suggest to do that. Um, otherwise, it, it seems to me like punishment, like straight up punishment, like somebody down and then here we come and knock them down even further. This is not cool. This is not cool. We need to open these up. We need to do a better job at this. Like Commissioner Tarbwa and Springfield were saying, we need to do better and we can. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Now, before I go back to the others, I know that Director Leeper um, is raising her hand. And I had one quick question to, <clears throat> as I understand, it was actually the city's board of health, <clears throat> excuse me, health director, and also the, um, uh, the this wasn't a decision that was just made um, with no information. We were, we were guided to this by the uh, authorities that oversee the health and safety of the city of Northampton. And it is, it's terrible. It's terrible inconvenience for people. And I don't want to go back and forth because I know it does look like we're going to have a little, what I'm trying to avoid is having a lot of back and forth. So I know that Director Leeper wanted to respond. And then I know that Commissioner, Tar oh, Commissioner, Commissioner Richards, that I can't remember who had the, who up first. So I'll say Commissioner Tarbutton and then Commissioner Richards and I think Commissioner Cancel just has not lowered his hand. Okay, so we're gonna go in this order. Director Leeper um, has some comments, maybe around uh, some answers maybe, and maybe could correct me if I'm wrong around the guidance that we received around the closing of the common areas. And then please to, then to Commissioner Tarbutton and then to Commissioner Richards. So I, I just wanted to provide some, some clarification around um, this process. Um, it, we didn't just um, up and close the common areas and the community room and the laundry rooms. This was many meetings with the Department of Health, many meetings with the experts at several extermination companies. Um, the problem is, is when people that have bed bugs don't know that they have bed bugs and they're transporting their laundry through the common halls and into the laundry rooms, you, we are inadvertently spreading the problem. Additionally, we have already spent upwards of $80,000 to help residents in that, um, you know, preparation, uh, the things that have to be done with their personal items um, to get ready for treatment. Um, we have 100% um, as an agency bore not only the cost of the extermination, which is our job, but also in the resident prep of their personal items in the unit. Um, and so, again, it's about $50,000 spent to date on preparation, which is solely to help the residents, and about $30,000 in extermination treatments. Um, to date. So I just wanted to give some clarification about that. It's not, you know, that we're trying to make their lives more difficult. Um, and certainly if we didn't have to go to court and get court orders for people that didn't comply, uh, you know, we would have opened them already. They would be open already. But there were two residents that we, three residents that we had to get injunctions on um, because they would not comply. Um, and so now we're down to one. Um, and I, I figured uh, the staff and I suggested two months for um, free laundry because it was two months that they were out um, or that they were down. Um, laundry is an amenity. It's not uh, part of the lease. But I just thought that that was a gesture that they were down for two months. We should have them be free for two months. Um, and lastly, I'd like to remind um, all of you on the board that I know that there are sometimes questions, but 
you know, the stoves and the laundry and all of that stuff. And these things that are being brought up, um, our attorney has brought to my attention that are, we're really um, not staying to the agenda and we're going to get ourselves in trouble if we continue on this route. Um, we must stay to the agenda and these are not agenda topics. Thank you, Madam thank you. for letting me speak. Okay. Thank you, Director Lieber. And, and um, yes, so I know that, um, I know that Commissioner Tarbutton and Commissioner Richards have some follow-up remarks, and um, I, I guess I'll just say if we if we can think of what we what was uh, discussed, what was reported in the executive director's report, and stick to those items. And really, if you have a question, it's really meant for questions. It's not necessarily help. I mean, it. Uh, um, it's not necessary. We're speaking to each other rather than. Uh, addressing questions that might uh, be answered. So um, if, if if there are further questions, yes, from from uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Uh, yeah, I guess I would call this a point of uh, information, a point of order. Uh, any information from the attorney who is not a board member should go through the chair. Sidebar conversations between the ED and the attorney, that should be something we should talk about. You have disabled the chat so residents and people can't talk, and then you utilize this. And I think it's unfair, and I think I will report that to the uh, to Office of Attorney General because it should be privileged. That should not be going on as the chair. And the chair, you have way more power than utilizing the lawyer doesn't tell us what we're doing. You're the chair and the board. We oversee the ED, including. So just remember that. And I just want to say, I just don't want NHA to be considered to be more transactional than compassionate. And in the spirit of Christmas, I'll just say this, as poor as I am, I'd like to donate my salary on this board to the residents so they can have be reimbursed for um, what they spent. I'll, I'll do it. I think that is fair. And I'm telling you guys, you look bad. And I just want to say, I'm doing everything I can. If I have to give my pennies that I make a year on this board, I'll do it. So send it to them and then I'll pay for it. Just like I paid for when I went to conferences and conventions. If I have to do that, look, Northampton, you had a lot of money. You know you do. Salary, the ED, you're well paid, over well paid in some ways. So I just think that we need to think about this. And I just want to also say, because again, I experienced, I went to court, <sighs> court summons, and there were lies, false allegations made as factual allegations. And I looked forward to going to that judge and sharing my case. And I asked for an evidentiary hearing to show more stuff and all of the stuff we're talking about. I keep hoping that we don't have to go to that level. But just because you sent a court, if you had done proactive, preventative measures, you wouldn't be paying all of this. See how this cost us? If you had done, tell people what to do, tell them what they are, we wouldn't be doing this reaction. And I do not like hearing the expense. If the expense, then you drive your own car to work and let us save on gas with that. How about that? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. And is there some final remark? Then yes, Commissioner Richards had some final remarks. Oh, you're muted, Commissioner Richards, I'm sorry. And uh, Madam Chair, yeah. just so you know, Attorney O'Connor had his hand raised. Oh, too. yes, once yes. Okay. Um, once Commissioner no. Richards, I just wanted to let you know in case you didn't see it. Okay, and Commissioner then, Richards, and then I'd like to hear from Commissioner, I'm sorry, from, well, uh, Attorney O'Connor, would you wait then? Because another commissioner has his hands raised. So I'll go to Commissioner Richards. Commissioner Kent yeah. and then Attorney Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, I count on our attorney to help us keep on track. So thank you, Attorney O'Connell, and I appreciate you as always. Uh, and I'm so happy to hear uh, Kara's report. And I understand the difficult position that uh, you are in about having people who don't comply to take them to, you know, having to do all that you can to help them but to uh, take them to court and for the good of the whole. And uh, I know that you are looking out for the good of the whole. And I can say that I totally appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Commissioner Cancel, and then we'll go to Attorney O'Connor, please. 
Uh, yeah, this is uh, it's just a short um, uh, comment here and suggestion is that I um, wonder if we could uh, have Director Deeper um, uh, put together a contingency plan for the future um, in the case of an outbreak uh, of bugs like this, that we have something um, in place uh, for um, how to how to work with it uh, in the future. Um, that's all. Okay, so I'm going to turn now to Attorney O'Connor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I would just urge you, Madam Chair, to move on. We've discussed things that are way, way, way beyond what were in the executive director's report. Um, and if we want to have an extensive discussion about bed bugs and the laundry room and reimbursement, that should be a separate agenda item. And we can really get into this in great detail and not be at risk of violating the open meeting laws, because I'm very concerned, given that for 20 plus minutes now, we've been talking about the executive director's report and a whole lot of it is beyond things she talked about that were, were in uh we're in some waters that could be troubling in terms of open meeting law violations. So I'd suggest it's time to move on. And I'm gonna take you up on that suggestion, even though Commissioner Tarbutton, unless it's really something, I, I oh, well. Yeah, it's a point of uh, information. Yes, please. Uh, my question, I get this about brevity and stuff and things like that in the meeting, but I just wanna say last meeting I counted, 45 minutes chair was talking about Pass, not pass, adding this 45 minutes that I will never get back. So think about it, time. Is it when people are bringing up stuff? And I don't know how we couldn't be talking about all of this issues with the bed bug and you want to get brevity and open meeting law. Don't put that in as an excuse because 45 minutes, you sat there quietly while that happened last meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. So I'm going to move right on then uh, to the approval of the November regular meeting minutes. I'll ask, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second, I'll second that. Okay, that is moved and seconded. Now for discussion. Is there any amendments, any additions, deletions, or corrections? Additions? I, I'm sorry, approve? Madam Chair. This is to what I, I didn't hear. I have a noise issue here. That was oh, for I'm the sorry. executive director's report? No, no. Um, no, we don't. We don't uh, actually vote on that report, but we yeah, do okay. vote to approve the minutes. And so there was a motion just made oh. by Commissioner Brooks and seconded to approve the minutes. And I asked if there are any additions, corrections, or deletions. Hearing none, I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commission uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, I'll, uh, what's the word? Abstain. I didn't get the notes and I didn't see it online in the city website. So, Thank but you. I have been traveled. So no, I mean, Thank uh, you. abstain. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair with five yeas and one abstention. Okay, that motion carries. Thank you, everyone. We move on to unfinished business. And what we had at the last meeting was taking up that redlined document, which was the work <clears throat> that was done that was maybe, you know, incorrectly called just Scrivener's errors because there were a few substantial things. And so I, I would ask, since everyone does have that now, although I know Commissioner Tarbutton does not, in Texas, I would actually ask if folks, since we have now a um, governance and policy committee, that this would be this would make sense if someone wanted to move to refer this to that committee. This would make sense for it to be the first item of business for that committee to take up. Motion to approve. Is there a, uh, that's a second by Commissioner Tarbutton? I'm confused. Did you make a motion? You want to make a motion that I asked. The, I asked if there was a motion from the floor to refer this amendment right. to the bylaws. I heard that part. New, to the new governance and policy committee. Okay. My question is, I haven't before, seen it. And uh, what, before, what is, before we get yeah. to the question, we still have a motion on the floor, and I'm looking for a second, and then we can have questions and discussions. Oh. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Torrent. Go ahead. Hello. Um, 
I haven't seen it and I'd like to see it in the paper form like I did the original. That way I was able to spot out a lot of um, cons issues and corrections. Um, I don't know. We have yet to have a meeting, a, 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 a committee meeting. So this would be something on the new. I think there is a, uh, what is it, a grievance committee that I don't know much about. So I'm not, I think since we did this as a collective, I'd like to see it done as a collective on this issue, but I do think that relegating and designating issues for committees are great. I love committees. I wish we had more. So uh, that is my reason why I would say no on this. Thank you. Anyone else want to want to chime in on referral, referring this to the new governance and policy committee? Commissioner Cancel, please. Uh, yeah, I uh, really appreciate um, uh, Madam Chair, uh, you suggesting this um, and the motion that's put forth because there is a lot of content here. Um, and um, I, I was going to uh, suggest that we uh, table it, but I think uh, having the committee um, um, work with this and then bring it back to the board, I think would be much more efficient. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Mo motion to approve. Uh, it's already been moved and seconded. So yeah, um, I have motion you want to move to, the question. You want yeah, to move the question. Move the question. If there's Sorry. no if there's no more discussion on this, and I see none from the other commissioners, then I I will ask then the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes, this is uh, to refer the uh, correction and proposed uh, Scrivener's errors and changes to the bylaws to the subcommittee. Um, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yeah, uh, yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. No, for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Commissioner, thank you. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, five yeas and one nay. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Then that brings us right up to the new business. And I will ask the secretary to read the resolution, please. And I'll yeah. allow for a motion from the floor. So, um, Madam Chair, um, we had hoped and we had put out in the original um, product that HUD had, mm -hmm. that HUD had uh, said that they would get them to us by end of day today. Um, and we waited until the meeting began at 530 and continuously checked and they had not released them to us. So I would ask, um, because we don't actually have the required numbers from HUD yet, Although we put it on the, uh, we asked you to put it on the agenda because it needs to be approved for December 1st, they haven't released it yet. So we'll ask that you table it till the next meeting. Is there a motion from the floor? Motion so to moved. table. Okay, Commissioner Cancel, I'll say moved and seconded Commissioner Richards to uh, postpone this until the next meeting. And I'll ask the secretary, oh, well, any discussion? on the postponement. Okay, then I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes, I wish the chat was open so I could write it to bleed out the noise. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, with six yeas, uh, the motion passes. Okay, thank you. I think that brought us to the end of the agenda. And I want to wish everybody a really happy holiday. Um, and we'll see you in the new year. I'll ask then if there's a final motion before we end. Is there a motion that's non-debatable? Motion to dismiss. Okay, a motion to adjourn from Commissioner adjourn. Tarleton. Is Just there a second? Second. Okay, and that's non-debatable. So uh, say aye. 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 Who, you, yeah, have yeah, yeah. Call. you have to roll call that, sec Secretary? No, but I, I just need to know who seconded it. I think I did. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Commissioner, Commissioner Tarleton moved that yeah. and seconded it. Okay, so thank you very much. So we're adjourning.